In this video, we're going to focus on how you can create a custom horizontal stack bar here like this. We're going to focus on creating these labels here, matching with this here. You can see here label red and this one here, number six and number nine. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how we can create the custom horizontal bar chart in Chart.js. First of all, what we need is of course our boiler template, which you can find here on Chart.js3.com getting started. This specific link here, which you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code here. Copy this. And if you want to understand this code, make sure you watch this video here. So then I'm going to paste that in there or cut this out. And we're going to put this in here, save that, refresh. There we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to maximize the size of this chart. Say here, 80%. All right, that works. Next one I want to do, I want to convert the chart. Basically, I want to make this a horizontal chart first. So I'm going to scroll down here and then we're going to say here in the options, index, axis. This will be equals to Y. Make sure I have a comma here, save. So we swap these two. There we are. Next, what I want to do is I want to make them stacked. So I'm going to say here on the X scale, comma, we'll put in here stacked equals true. And then we're going to copy that. Put a comma here, put that in there, save, refresh. All right, so now it's stacked, but you might say, I don't see it being stacked. The reason why you don't see it is simply because we have no additional data set. So what I want to do is I only want to have one data set because basically our stacked item or stacked bar should have a single data set or multiple data sets with one value. That's, that's what I want to uh, say. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, I'm just going to copy this two more times, comma, paste, comma, paste. All right, then just for the sake of it, I'm going to change here the value. Let's say this one will be nine. And I'm going to say that this will be our yellow color. I'm going to rule every other color except for the yellow. Put that in here, but we're going to say here, this will be number one for a solid color here. And this will be the yellow. Just put in the label yellow. Next here, this will be the blue and the blue will be the second one of the border color or second color. There we are. Here we're going to remove all the values, but we keep the array here. This is very important. For the data, we need an array for border co for border colors or background colors. You can remove the array. It's up to you. So this one here, I'll just say here, this is number three and this will be blue. And or let's make this number six. Since blue and six are nicely connected. And then here finally red and red should have number three, of course. So then I'm going to put that in here, put that there, or remove those colors and only have the red color, of course, save, refresh. So now we have this here. You can see here, all of these others should be removed. So what I'm going to do here is in the labels, I'm going to remove every other label, except for one, which is the Monday in this case. I would not, it doesn't matter what's the name of it because the value of the Monday is not really an important part of this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove here the legend and going to remove as well all the grid lines here. We're going to create our own grid lines. So we're going to uh, scroll down here in the X scale. We're going to say, here, first of all, let's say the grid. And our grid here, we say display equals false. Save that. Refresh, you can see here now we have the grid lines removed. Let's remove the border lines. So comma, we say here, draw border equals false false save that refresh then you might see here i'm not sure if you're seeing it very carefully here on the x scale that the, this color has lightened up a little bit finally what i want to do here is the um draw the tick lines or the tick marks we set this on false as well if i save this then you can see then we are going to be this will be nicely connected to each other all right finally here the ticks itself comma ticks I'm going to say a display equals false, save, refresh. All right, now this works and you might see still here this line and wondering why is this here? Because the Y scale has these lines or this is the Y scale line, but the Y scale have a connected grid line here. And that needs to be removed as well. To do that, let's copy this. Put a comma here, enter, save, refresh. All right, so this works and we see here this border that's being skipped. Let's remove or make sure that the border skipped is 
visible. I'm going to put it here instead of in the data set. And the reason why is if you do it in a data set, I have to do it on every single data set like the border width here. We could just do it all in one, which makes the code more dry. Or in other words, do not repeat yourself. So we're going to say here, um, border skipped equals false. Make sure your comma here, save, refresh. Now we have these borders here, beautiful. So what I would do is maybe these border width here, I'm going to just remove them and move them above or move them down in the options. Here, border width equals one. All right, comma, save, refresh. Nothing truly happens, it's just the same here. All right, so now we have this done. What we need to do here now is basically work with the plugin. Oh, and before I even do that, I need to make sure we remove the uh, plugin option here. So uh, the, or the legend, which is in the plugins. So we're going to go in the skills. You see this skills here. All right, put a comma and then we put the plugins here. And then we're going to say here legend. And then we say here legend will be equal to display false. Hide the legend. There we are. So now we have this and we have some work to do here or I realize we need to have to narrow down this bar here. So what I'm going to do here, I will do two things. First of all, I'm going to say enter and then I'm going to say here bar percentage. I'll put this on 0 0.1, which basically means 10%. One would be equal to 100%. And then I'm going to say a category percentage. And if you want to understand these items, I have a video about understanding the difference between bar percentage and category percentage. Watch that video uh, in charge. Yes, that's you can find up in YouTube as well. So I'll save this, make this 100% of the entire category refresh. There we are. So now we have this here and this looks quite decent. And I believe that maybe this could be even narrow more and more narrow. Let's do it like that. Yeah, I think that would be more acceptable. What I want to do now is to create a plugin to push this here at the bottom. Because that is of course what we want so we have these dotted lines here above and maybe we have this item here is far too too much white space here what we could do here as well let's do that as well uh, aspect ratio will be adjusted by default it is set on two the value of two which means which basically means twice the size of this and then the height will be divided by two so what i want to do here is um i want to increase this part or the ratio of that one so that we have a smaller height so that will mean i need to increase this instead of number two we can do for example number five comma save so it is five by one that's basically what we're doing now all right so that looks good but i think then this here should be back on to 10 percent all right let's push this down now by creating a plugin so we go in here uh, let's see after the options, there you are. So this is here, comma, plugins, and let's create a new plugin. We can say here our custom bar plugin or something like that, doesn't matter. Give it a name because this will be our constant or our object value. So in here, I'm gonna say slash slash, and I'm gonna say custom bar plugin block, constant custom bar equals. And I'm gonna say the ID, although we won't be using it, custom bar, comma, then we're going to do the drawing time and the drawing time will be before we draw the data sets. So we're going to say here before data sets draw and say here, chart arcs and plugin options. Although we won't be using these two here. We only use this one here. And for that, what we're going to do here is what we call object destructuring. So if you don't understand object destructuring, I'm going to recommend in the description box, Click on there and you can find a link, understanding chart.js yes, uh, object destruction. It's very important. So we're going to say here, equals to the chart argument or the, arg or the object. And then what we're going to do here now, we're going to split them out. We're going to say CTX, we need to, for drawing, we need to have the, I think the config, the data, the chart area. And then within the chart area, we're going to get the positioning to the top, bottom, left and right. And I guess width and height. So if you want to understand again what chart area does, in that case, I'm going to recommend you as well. In the description box, there's a video link understanding chart area in chart.js. Very important. This one here together with object destruction is very, very useful. So then what I want to do here is probably as well the scales. 
x and y. So now we have all of those and I think we can start drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of things here. Now let's refresh this. All right, so we have this here. What we want to do here basically is a few items. We want to have these lines here and we could have a dotted line. There will be a dotted line. It's going from here all the way down to the end of the chart area basically. But what we want to do as well is that this bar is pushing down here as well. Next, we want to have some text here, whatever the value would be. And then also the label or the label color. So you can see red. So we see here, let's say the $20 or what is this? This is $3, so $3 red then here we would have a uh, six dollars and that is uh, blue and then here nine and that's yellow so let's start to work on one thing at a time so the first thing what we need to do here is first of all say uh, we need to save this so we say ctx.save to save all variables above or basically our default state this is very important we need to have this default state in the canvas if later on we do the restore functionality Anyway, so now we have this. What we want to do next is we want to get, basically we want to get the data points. Because this is a bit more tricky. Because you can see here we have three, six, and nine. This all together makes a length of 18. And that, that is now just a lucky numbering, I guess, in this case, because the lines will be nicely aligned. But suddenly if you have, for example, here instead of nine, we make it, uh, well, let's make this four. Then we might have here some white space. So to do this, I'm going to show a very simple way. And of course you can do another way for it, but I'm just going to do here in the X to avoid that we have never, never white space. I'm going to say here a, a max value. And this max value will be in this case, 18 because three plus six plus nine. But if I would do uh, like this and I have this on four, you will see this will be all matching. Uh, all right, interesting. I think I forgot my comma. There you are. Make sure you have the max with the comma. So it will always reach the item. So if you want to know how you would get the value, well, basically you could do a formula here, which would reduce the array when we make an array later on to get all these values. You make a new array, reduce that, what's the total sum of that, and it will give you the value. So that's the most important one. Anyway, so we force this one, and of course, right now I'm going to just put this one back on 18. There we are. So uh, let's look what we will have to do now. What we're going to do here, uh, we can do it step by step. Let's create the array with the values. And the array with the values is basically we have the three, six, and nine. I want to make sure that those are all connected or in an array. So it's a constant. Because let's look at it one more time. The data sets here have all separate. Uh, the array is basically broken down into three separate data sets. So what we want to do, we want to merge them all together now. So it's a constant. Let's call this the data point array equals. And what it is is very simple. That's why we have the data uh, object destructuring. It's a data dot data sets. Basically, we go to the data sets and we say dot map, which loops through all these arrays or every array of the data set in this case. And then what we're going to say here is the data set comma index. And all I want to do here is and I'm going to say here, I want to return because the map array method creates a new array based on what we are pointing out now. And basically what we're going to do here is, I guess we can say here, we have the data dot, or sorry, the data set dot data. And then here, I'm going to say here zero. Why zero? Because our, our data only have one value in the array here, but this must be an array or else you get an error. So that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it. So once we have this, I do a console log and let's look if our value is what we expect it to be. Save this. Refresh, nothing happens here. Open up developer tab and then you can see here our new array. And it, lo and it loops or loads multiple times, which is normal because this is an animation. And when we move over, it will see it shows it well, but you can see here very clearly three, six and nine. So we created our new array. So now we have this. What we want to do now is basically we want to some accumulate this and this is a tricky one so pay attention here because what I want to do is not only three six and nine this will be three and then here or oh sorry number number three then here will be six so that will be nine together and then we have here this will be 18 so what we have to do now is 
let's say a constant and I'm going to give this accumulate as a value equals an array and this array whatever the array is will be later on this one that we're going to insert it there this array will be again an array dot map so we're going to create from that array a new array but this array what we'll do, well, it will sum the value, so we're going to say sum, or at least uh, that's the reference, that's uh, the sum, so we're going to say here, value, and we do this again, will be equal to sum plus equal value. And then here, basically what we're doing is a reduce in itself. We reduce the array, and then we create a new v value in that array that we push in there all the time. So it sounds very complicated, I know, even for me, this is a slightly tricky formula, but it works. And if we're going to do later on a console log, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's say a constant, uh, what we can say here is, let's say uh, sum array. I'm not sure, I guess it's not really the right term. It's not really sum, it's a sum and uh, a cumulative, a cumulative sum, maybe. Uh, cumulative sum array that's probably the right term equals the accumulation functionality or value here which will of course be used with the item of our data point array so once we did this then I can say a console log and grab this one and put that in here save refresh and now you can see here we have a 3 6 and 9 and we have another one that is the accumulative array which is 3 9 6 or accumulative sum whatever you want to call it this is the item which works quite nicely all right so we have now both and those both are important for us so what we're going to do now is the first thing is I guess what we can do here is well let's see we want to create uh, a few items maybe we can put in the text here first the first text is this is from 0 to 3 so here will be number 3 a dollar sign and then we have the color and then afterwards we have to make the lines and that's why the, cum the cumulative sum will become important because the line will not be 3 6 and 9 because that will be different because it is this here is stacked on top of each other if not you would have 3 this will be the line for number 3 number 6 will be here halfway because that's the official 6 value and number 9 will be here and then it's not what I want I want to have a line here there there and of course in the beginning so let's start to work on the next part which is the text so I'm going to say text or dollar text or something like that text number anything what we're going to do here is simple for loop I'm going to say four and I say let i equal zero and then I'm going to say i and this i will be looped as long as data dot data sets dot length so basically if you're wondering how i get this the data sets dot length is because we have how many data sets we have here or we could even do this array point with length that's i guess same as well doesn't matter both of those should be fine i guess we can just even do this one just to make it easier so we keep on looping this as long as that is smaller than and then we're going to say i plus plus now what we want to do here is to draw the text. So I'm going to say ctx.font. And what we want to do here for the font, I'm going to make a few items. I want to make it a bolder font. I want to make this, uh, let's say 20 pixels. And the font family style will be sans serif, which is a, a chart.js font that they use in the canvas. So once you have this, the next thing what we want to do is the ctx.fill style for the color so in this case the color I guess black should be fine next ctx dot fill text because now we're going to draw the text and it basically consists of a few items first of all the value the x and then the y position all right so now we come to, now we are in a little bit of a tricky terrain however it will be easy just follow along so what we're going to do here first thing what we need to do here is uh, we need to get the value and I guess here we can just get this and I'm going to say here index will be I then here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in here 20 and 20 if I save this now refresh 
You can see here the numbers, but you can see they're on top of each other. It looks almost like an infinity symbol or a lemniscate, which is quite nice. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do then with that is, of course, I want to push that a little bit. Well, we can do 20 pixels from the line here. That's fine. Above maybe a 20 pixels. And that's also acceptable. However, I want to go here and there. So I need to make sure we have the positioning of this. So what I'm going to do here, I guess this one right now is fine, but later on we need to loop through this or, well, we have to loop through this. So what I have to do here is we need to get the pixel of the matching ones. Be here, there, and there. Well, the height, I guess, is acceptable. So we're going to say here, X, and this is a uh, the X reference to the scale here. And then we're going to say here a special command, which is building in charge. Yes, is get pixel for value. Once we have this here, what we want to do here is we want to get the pixel value of the item. And I realize that we probably have to do some adjustments. However, I'm going to grab this for now. I'm going to get here the cumulative sum. Now, let me show you first this array point. So maybe you will understand exactly what's going on. If I do this, you'll see that this won't work. If I save this, refresh. You can see here, as I indicated with the lines, because it's cumulative. So right now, this is wrong. So that's why I need to get the cumulative sum array, save that, refresh. All right, so now it works, but we have a problem here. This goes to three here, number three starts here, which I don't want, I want to start here. So what I'm going to do here, while this value is here, I can play with this array. And you say, you might wonder where is number nine? Well, number one, nine is basically here somewhere. I can show it to you as well. So let's say here, uh, this, we just do this one. There's a minus 20 then we should be able to see number nine popping up again. All right, so now that shows. So what I want to do here is, we can just leave this for now, but I need to push this to the beginning, but having number three. How do we do that? We have the cumulative sum here, but eventually we need to draw lines at the beginning and everywhere here, so we can push a value in here, or not even push. We call this array unshift, putting a value at the very beginning of an array. So this cumulative sum array, get now a new array value i'm going to say here community of sum dot unshift for adding a value at the very beginning and the value will be number zero so what happens let me show you with the console log you will see now the change happening let me just hide this refresh open up developer tab you can see this works but as well here you can see here first we get three values, three, six, uh, three, oh, sorry, three, nine, and 18, which is the cumulative sum. And then afterwards, once we do an unshift, we add up, added the zero here, which doesn't impact any value here because zero on the cumulative sum would be no problem. But if there would be a value, that should be no problem because everything will be, uh, oh, well, that might, that might become a problem, but then we have a value should be done before that, prior to that anyway. But now we have a zero, it's a neutral value, no value, no problem. So we have the zero here, putting it there, and everything works nicely. So this looks quite nice, but I want to push it with 20 pixels to the right. So we're going to say here in our value, our text here, plus 20 pixels, save, refresh. All right, that's number one. And then maybe what we can do here is I'm going to make this a, a template literal. So we're going to use backspace, or sorry, backtick, backtick. And you can find it on your keyboard under the escape button. I'm going to say a dollar sign, making this a a variable that recognizes it. But then I want another dollar. Here we can put it like this or like that. That should not be a problem. It recognizes as a string value. But this one here, it understands that this dollar sign command here, from this point on, it is a variable. So if I save this, you can see here we get this. But maybe you want to have a space here. Save. Refresh. No problem at all. All right. So now we have this. Next one, what we want to do is, of course, the text. And the text should be here down. And what we want to do with the text, of course, is to make sure that we get the, uh, I guess, the label. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put here enter. And then what I'm going to say here is, I guess we can do here another for loop. And no, oh, let's see, hold on. Well, after looking carefully, I realized that we could just quickly build it within this here. And that's really phenomenal. I thought I had to make a separate for loop for that. No need for this. So what we're going to do here is the only thing what we have to do is 
we have to reassign the colors here and I'm going to make this hashtag triple six which is the official color in um, Chart.js and I don't want to make this bolder or maybe we can ignore the bold here but I do need here not I guess maybe 15 pixels or 12 pixels it doesn't matter so much I'm going to put in this here then I'm going to say enter and we can just copy all of this now so we're going to just modify that so here I don't need a template literal so I'm going to remove all these back ticks because we only want one single value within here which is basically the labels text here the uh, not the no sorry not the labels but the label so data set from data data sets to label in red blue or yellow so what we're going to do here is we're going to say a data and remember we get the data from here above so data dot data sets then we say here the data sets will be based on the i and then we're going to say here dot labels labels is that an array if i'm not mistaken it's just a string value so no array here so we're going to save that refresh now all right interesting it's undefined what we have to do here is just to check why is this undefined data dot data sets is undefined so we say data dot data sets oh of course so why is this undefined i forgot the data object here let me show you we are going from data dot label oh, sorry no from data dot data sets dot label oh there should not be data but then maybe i i'm putting in an s am i getting ahead of myself i think i do all right my bad that's horrible so remove that and remember it is not labels as I indicated but for some reason I didn't pay attention so it is label without the s alright so now you can see here but I'm not sure if you're seeing it carefully or clearly red and all the colors so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it down and what I will do is I'll push it down 40 pixels there we are and now I think that is quite acceptable and it looks quite nice and we could do this maybe bold if that would be even better or bolder save refresh that's alright all right, so now we have this. What I do realize is we still have to push this down and we have to make the line here. So let's do the next one here. At least we've done some of the heavy work. Next thing here is, uh, well, what we have to do here is the line. Let's do the line now, I guess. The line will be based on the sum or basically the cumulative sum array. And the reason why this is necessary is because we have to make a line here line there line there and eventually here so 0 3 and this will be 9 and then 18 for value points which of course is as well shown in here or for array values so what we can do here is we can just grab that so we're going to say here the cumulative sum array dot for each I'm going to loop through all of those items and all we're going to do here double parentheses and then let's make this function arrow expression already and then in here, what I want is, because it's the shorthand for this, let's say here the data point, or maybe the sum data point, let's say sum data point, and then we're going to say here index. I'm not sure if we're going to use that, but just in case. And now, once we have this, enter, semicolon here, we're going to put in here the item. So what do we need here? Well, I guess we need a few items here. We need to have the drawing, which is the begin, path so i'm going to say a ctx dot begin path i'm going to draw the line but i'm going to do begin path to indicate that this line is disconnected from anything else so this is a new shape or a new line then i'm going to say here the color so ctx dot stroke style and the color can be black can be gray doesn't matter or you can say your gray or black i'll just leave it in black for now then i'm going to say your ctx dot line width and this one here will be equal to one pixel then what we're going to do here is basically the starting of the drawing. So let's, uh, well, where do we start? Well, basically we start here. Then we have here the X and Y variable. So our starting point is supposed to be from, let's say up here all the way down to the bottom. But we need to make sure that this is always matching on the X scale of these values here, which we have nicely, because that's the sum data point, which indicates that. So we're going to say here, CTX dot move to starting point is x and y we know that we want to start at the very top that's how you have the chart area top and here 
What we're going to do is we're going to get this value, but we're going to say x dot get pixel for the value which is in this case the first value would be number zero, second one would be third, or number three, and it will calculate well, what is the pixel positioning of that. So once we did that, we can do exactly the same here, or at least almost the same. We just do your CTX dot line two. So not move two, but it's the line two. This is basically the starting point as a dot of your pencil. Imagine you get your pen, you put it on a piece of paper, where you're going to start, and then you make the line. This is the line two, also X and Y, but I'm going to do this, copy all of that. But then I'm going to say bottom. Basically, we say here, the line starts here, going down here. Once you did this, I want to do the last thing is ctx.stroke to say we're going to draw the line. Save this, refresh. All right, and black is not defined. We get an error here. I think I forgot to make this a string value. This needs to be a string value, of course. Save, refresh. And there we are. So this works, and you can see here, this is the only tricky part here. This is a line that is for some reason a double line. So uh, no solution for that so far. Well, or we, we might move this one here, maybe with one pixel, but that's all right. I'll ignore that for now. What I do want is dotted lines here. And then we have here, although the left and the right or the ending and beginning point could have maybe a different line that like that, that should be fine. But what I want here, dotted lines. We make this dotted, so we're going to say here. Uh, let's put that just here above. Ctx dot, and I'm going to set, uh, if I'm not mistaken, set line dash. This is an array value, I'm going to say 6, 6. So 6 pixels, solid line, and 6 pixels, white space. Set my column here, say refresh. All right, let's close that so you can see it more clearly. You can see here this starts to work. So now we're almost done. Let's push this to the bottom. Uh, and before I even continue on, I want to say as well here, I want to reset this by saying ctx.restore. And next, this is very important. If ever you're going to draw another line or something else, you need to reset this as well, because for some reason this will not, uh, or else it will borrow this structure of the color so you want to avoid that so that's why you're going to set again a dash line here but we say that this dash line doesn't have any structure which will reset it to a, to a solid line very important to do that or else it will not work the restore doesn't trigger this specific functionality so what we need to do next is basically uh, push the value down so for that, I'm going to use a for loop, and this is the last one. Let me just uh, break down these items here. The line, and here, push bar to bottom. So now we're going to create a for loop, and this for loop, let i equals zero, and then I'm going to say here, you want to keep on looping through this i as long we have the amount of data set lengths. The reason why is we have only three data sets here, we need to push them down. So we're going to say here, data dot, I guess data sets dot length would be more than sufficient. And we say I plus plus for incremental value. So then what I want to do here is we're going to use a for each uh, array method as well. And the reason why is we need to loop through every item here and we're going to use a command for that. So let me just show you what is the command. I'm going to use here this one, the chart.get data set meta. And this here should have a value zero or one, etc. etc. But let's do one here first. If I save this, refresh or zero, then you get then you will get a object with the entire information of the data set. And what we basically need to know here is two things. We need to recalculate the position of what is this, what's the height of the bar, push it down. So let me just uh, uh, do one item here because this is the one we eventually need. We need to go into the Y value here. So let's go in here. We can see here, in here, what I want to do here is the Y value. Do I see it here? Um, is it the data uh, object? Uh, all right, interesting. I think this is, let me just refresh this one more time. 
click on this all right so now we get this one here sorry so i was slightly confused looking for it and then what i want to do here is i'm looking for the y value surprisingly i cannot find it hold on all right i found it i'm not paying attention carefully so once we're on here open up this and then you open up the data and in your opening when you open the data you can see your index zero let's open up this here and then we get here the y and the or sorry the x and the y value and we need this y which basically indicates the positioning of our bar and this is very important i want to rewrite or readjust this to the bottom so let's start to do that one here so we have this i guess dot data that's the one we need and we're going to say here I can just even comment this out. We don't need this really. We just need to have here the chart dot get data set meta zero dot data. Then what we're going to say here dot for each y. I want to get the value of the y of every single bar because I need to recalculate from every bar the new y positioning. So we say here the for each and then here double parentheses again. And I'm going to say here the data point comma index and i guess we can just do it like that and uh function error expression and then we're going to say here data point let's just say data point dot y equals we're going to readjust the positioning i want to say your bottom for now if i save this so we have this all nicely as you can see here we have a for loop and i have here uh, the zero and this zero should be an i because we have three data sets save refresh so we get this now and now you can see it's being positioned to the bottom but if you look very carefully we're clipping off half of the bar you might want this but maybe not so what we could do here is we have to recalculate that one how do we calculate this well remember when we went here down we had here the bar percentage so the bar percentage will give us the access to it because we'll calculate how big the bar is which is 10% of the bar category. So we can calculate that, but it started in the center, which means that we're only seeing the half. So the other half is at the bottom because it starts at this point. So yeah, it's a lot of theory, sorry about that. So let's make it simple, let's make it visual. So if I just say here now, minus 10, and if you're wondering why negative and not positive, because I wanna push it up. If you're going up, zero is the, the highest point. So that's why chart area, understand chart area. Uh, that's very important so if I go this here you can see here now we're pushing it up but of course I don't want this hard coded I want this soft coded so let's start to do that one and then we're truly done what I'm going to do here is I need to calculate this and what I need to calculate is basically the difference here and we can just grab here the bottom or the height so this is very important if your chart area has like certain uh, values on the top we need to use the height if you're using the bottom if you have nothing else here anyway uh, in this case we have no legend because this no has no function for us so let's start to work on this and then what we're going to do here is simply calculating the bottom and what, uh, what we want to do here we're going to multiply this by the height and you can see I'm already putting a parenthesis because I need to give a priority so what I want to do here is what I need is we multiply by the config and that's basically doing how we get to config and then go to the bar percentage. Remember we had the config here, if I'm not mistaken, there we are. So basically from config, we go to dot options, that's this one here. And then we're going to grab here the bar percentage, dot bar percentage. Once we have this, if I save this now and refresh, you can see here, but we have an issue. We have too much space here. And the reason why is we saw at the beginning when I showed you, we, we are clipping off half. So basically we need to go again half down or that half of that entire height of this bar needs to be deducted. So basically what we're going to do here, deduction will be not this, but divide by two, save, refresh. And now we hit exactly the bottom, am I correct? We should be, but you might not be able to see it carefully or clearly because we have these lines here, the dotted lines. If I will make this solid, uh, where are you? This one, we should have a perfect hit. As you can see here, it hits nicely. Absolutely phenomenal. So once we save this, we're done here. And now we have this here. So if you like this, or maybe you want it maybe a bit smaller, 
we can reduce this here of course make it to 10 save there we are of course then you can test this you can test it by moving this but of course once you get very small and narrow we are missing or clipping off certain items so you have to really consider that with your design so that is basically what you can do here with this very unique horizontal bar chart so if you enjoy this video and maybe you want for example you want to create a progress bar chart which is also quite nice one this is a little bit different compared to this i'm going to recommend you this video here how to create a progress bar chart in chart.js